one looks at the available technology like the modern day smartphone, which is accessible to a lot of students from primary to tertiary education, one can create very basic forms of VR or augmented reality experiences to educate. In the past, we've seen some of our partners create a virtual reality video experience where one, uh, the viewer can put a VR headset on or at least slide their phone into a very rudimentary form of a VR headset and then experience fully immersed what it looks like when a virus is actually breaking down the human body rather than sitting in a classroom with 30 other children trying to make sense of what your biology textbook is teaching you. We've also seen augmented reality being used for education by Google. If one Googles a Tyrannosaurus Rex or a T-Rex, um, one can actually see what the T-Rex's size was and its actual colors. You can walk around it all by using the augmented reality software already built into an Android or iOS device. Another great thing about using smartphones for education uh, and e-learning is that we found that it talks to a more broader range of children, including the ones with learning disabilities, which uh, is great, you know, because a lot of the time they are the ones that are left behind and struggle in classrooms. We've also seen through studies that learning through virtual reality, augmented reality, or any kind of projection or interactive touch learning experiences that learning and retention of information can be increased from 70 up to 90 percent. So there's definitely a lot of benefit. The technology is definitely there and I just love to see both the private and the government sectors really tackle this technology head-on and bring it more into their classrooms allowing them to also take it out of their classrooms again and extend learning further back at home. We also did a really interesting thing for a local production company called Ecoledge, whose end client was Doctors Without Borders. We recorded an HIV commercial of a young man who meets a very pretty girl at a party, and he is confronted with making the right decisions under the influence um, and using a condom or not. And what was interesting about this experience, I won't tell you the whole thing, you can, you can go ahead and look at the video on our YouTube channel, but what was interesting about it is that the youth that had experienced this video, rather than you know sitting in a, in a hall or listening to a lecture about HIV and the dangers surrounding it, they, we had some people take the headset off and we could actually see these, the ones wearing short sleeves get goosebumps around the experience and a lot of them came back to us and they, they really felt touched and shocked and they felt that they went through that experience themselves. And we feel that again, when they are confronted with that experience in the future, that hopefully this time they'll make a better decision, taking them back to the most experience we put them in. Um, and yeah, with, uh, I can't wait to do more. <laughs> so I think virtual show houses will be the new norm. Uh, I most certainly believe so and I hope so. Since the start of Forge, we definitely did see an increase in demand for us, and not only from the real estate market, but also other industries like the automotive industry. Also more recently, we had a company that sells baths and spas ask us to come and create virtual tours of their products. In the past, we've also had architects bring us their blueprints, and we've created virtual reality experiences where one can interact and walk around a building and one can actually see what a building or an apartment looks like three or two years before it's been built. So all in all, we've, we've seen the demand for virtual tours in general grow. We've seen different variety of them and we've definitely seen a lot more property buyers become accustomed uh, to virtual tours and a lot of them want more virtual tours. I think they've realized the benefit of, of viewing 20 to 30 properties online on your phone or on your laptop in VR is much more efficient than driving around on a weekend looking at different properties. It's uh, amongst the other benefits, it's really a lot safer for both the viewer and the seller. So I definitely think in the, uh, maybe faster, but potentially in the next three to five years, we'll definitely see it normalize. Yeah. <laughs> What is the most interesting project I've worked on? 
That is a very difficult question. We've, we've done so many interesting things. More recently though, we took a small collaboration uh, production team up to the Cedarburg where we filmed a showreel for a retreat that time called Bliss and Stars. That was exciting, you know, we, we didn't over the three days get a lot of sleep um, as we filmed a lot of astrophotography at night and spent the day filming the showreel for Bliss and Stars. The great thing about it really was the team that we went up, the amount of gear we were filming with. Uh, it was really amazing to see all these different groups of people coming together with traditional videography, 360 virtual reality videography, deep, state, deep space photography, um, drones, uh, I think we had about four drones on set that, uh, that weekend. So it really it was, uh, it was a lot of fun working with all that equipment. Um, it was a great team to be a part of. The first evening we had to take a four kilometer hike, three o'clock in the morning, to take a photo of the Milky Way resting over a waterfall. Um, just the three of us walking alone at night, walking past leopard prints, uh, we did pass a bunch of baboons about 120 meters from us. So it was a very exciting experience, um, absolutely beautiful and we can't wait to show you the footage end of the month and hopefully then you can see what I'm talking about. Yeah. How has the pandemic influenced me personally and business-wise? I think business-wise we were in the same boat as everyone else. Um, it was really difficult at first but we, we kept swimming. We were fortunate enough to keep working from level four. Uh, and on a more positive side of things, we've, we've seen an increase in demand for virtual reality content, including virtual tours. And on the personal side, it's, it's given me more time, obviously working now from home, to realign my schedule and focus more on yoga or learning new languages. So there's definitely been a lot of good amongst the bad and um, we'll still be here, we'll keep going. And I'm excited to see where the pandemic might take future technologies. Am I a gamer? I'm not a big fan of PlayStation, I do own an Xbox, but I've been playing games or building computers since I was 16. So definitely I'm um, a huge PC gamer. I love Assassin's Creed or Call of Duty. Um, not that I find a lot of time to play games amongst business, but if I do play games these days, it's most probably virtual reality games, testing horror games for work, or just playing Beat Saber or Half-Life Alex in VR. Uh, it's definitely, if anyone does have time or potentially can access that game, it's, it's a good game to play in VR. <laughs>